Hey guys, Shane here. Welcome to episode 2 of our Dens Week, the Christmas special on my channel. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at creating a pine forest diorama base, or finite base, completely from start to finish. I'll talk you through how I make the pine trees, the snow, the base, and how to weather the model to suit, which was the figure from the last tutorial. Link to that on the top right. So the products that we're going to be using to create our Arden Bastone base were uh, sourced from Scenic Factory. So we're going to be using some of their ground litters, their pine tree sets, as well as their snow and mud effects. Um, the other products that we won't be using will be used in the next follow-up diorama video coming later in the week. So the base that we're going to be using for this is made up of both balsa wood blocks and then two blocks of blue foam which have been glued together with a non-solvent based adhesive. I've also cut a bit of an angle in this just for a little bit of interest and then we'll sculpt this to make a little bit of a rise in a hill and then we'll make our forest floor on top of it. So we're going to be using a lot of the forest floor products from uh, Scenic Factory. And these are really nice, A lot of, they're all organically based. It, there's something that you just cannot reproduce and that is organic. So it looks real because it is real and it, they're beautiful colors, lovely textures. So this, this is their autumn tone. Then their green tone, which we've used for spring. Again, same idea, can be scattered along a diorama base or a di diorama floor. And once again, we can see a lovely texture here, little bits of twigs and pine needles and what have you. Very nice great little details and these tubs will go a long way. Then we have some leaf litter, once again it's made of actual proper organic material. Now these have all been treated so these won't rot or break down, which is always an important thing, an important thing to keep in mind. So these are totally treated, so they are preserved which is very important. And then for the snow effects, we're going to be using their uh, realistic ice and snow, which is their fine version. Now this is non-hazardous, -haz so it's not like crushed glass um, that other snows are made out of. So this will not try to murder you like the crushed glass will. So this is quite safe to use and it's a very fine powder and we'll get some lovely effects out of this later in the video. What we'll be using for our ambush at Poitou um, diorama coming later in the week is their mud effects. So I'll just show you this now, but look at the um, very nice texture here, and it's also modelled to be muddy, so there's a bit of like a satin or a gloss quality to it. And then there's their pine trees, and these things are, I, I was blown away when I got these uh, in the post, they're absolutely stunning. Uh, I was watching um, John from Scenic Factories make them on his own channel tutorials and oh my god are they are these nice and it's gonna be very exciting to see how these come together we also get a pack of conifer bales that'll make up the um, various furniture of the tree if you will again a little bit hard to see here but they again these are natural uh, they are treated so they won't break down but they're very pretty and very um, in scale we also get two pins for mounting the trees as well as a small punch that we'll be using to attach the bales also we have some leaf litter. We'll be using this more for the other diorama coming up later in the week, but still very nice. Again, organic material and treated as all, always. So moving on to the base, we're going to start sculpting our base to give it a little bit of a rise. So you'll see that the top um, section that I've glued on is at an angle, and I always do this. It's always better to keep things at slight angles rather than going at straight 90 degree lines. It just breaks up the monotony of of the base and just adds a little bit of visual interest. So I'm just taking a box cutter here or a Stanley blade or whatever you like to call it and I'm just going to cut in a kind of random fashion. So I'm going to, I really want to blend this into the base just to create a slight rise. Now you'll notice that I'm cutting away from myself and I'm keeping note where my fingers are. I, I don't want to slice into myself which you can do when you kind of forget yourself while doing this. I also have quite a bit of length of blade out that just gives me an easier cutting surface. I'm just slowly slicing it back, keep changing the angle of the blade and the base, and I'll just try to get a kind of like a random natural appearance. Now we're going to be putting more texture on top of this, but this is just to give us our preliminary 
superstructure for our, our base. So with our basic groundwork laid, now we can start working on the few pine trees that are going to make up the centerpiece of this little vignette base. So these, this comes from Scenic Factory 6 inch set of distressed pine trees. They come in different sizes, different types of trees, distressed and non-distressed. I was going for this type of tree just because it makes it look like it's been in a war zone. It's a bit more like battered for maybe artillery and machine gun fire. So now I'm just taking the pine, um, the pine bales or the coniferous bales and I'm just separating them by size. So I have one with smaller pieces and one with larger pieces which is quite important when we start creating the furniture for this tree. I've also made a little bit of a jig out of balsa wood. I just cut into it with, with uh, my hobby knife and made two notches to support the tree. Now the trees come with uh, about an inch of waste material at the bottom for this purpose so we can either put on a clamp or a jig like I did. So now I'm going to start taking our little punch which is the small um, little uh, needle here that's supplied in the kit and I'm going to come up about maybe two inches from the bottom. Now there is a very comprehensive instruction set with these sets so I'm just going for about, about an inch and a half to two inches up and I'm just going to punch in about maybe three millimeters and I'm going to support the pine tree quite a bit here. They are made of real wood so I don't want to snap them. And I'm going to start with the larger bales uh, first and I'm going to work my way up and I'm just going to dip the stems into a small bit of PVA or white glue. You can also use white, uh, wood glue for this but PVA would probably is the, the best option. I'm just going to glue them in, hold them in for a couple of seconds until they stick punch again and I just do a slight rotation and then I come up maybe three mil between each limb so just punch in get the the limb into the tree rotate a uh, half turn come up three mil and continue and you'll see this now in operation these are very very nice they're a little bit delicate when you're working with them but they do give you a lovely lovely end result so just keep rotating just come up a little little bit between each rotation about two or three mil you do have plenty of limbs or bales in this you're not going to run out and we're going to focus on the larger branches first and then we're slowly going to get smaller as we go up if you're unsure there's a great tutorial from scenic factory that i'll have a link in this video to and also there's a, they have included a very nice instruction manual on how to do them too so they are very easy to follow and once you get the hang of it they're actually quite easy to work with it only takes a couple of minutes just to get the swing of it So it does take a little bit of time to start building it up, but immediately we can see our tree taking shape. So just take the t your time, build it up slowly, do one limb at a time, and try to keep, um, remember on what we're in the rotation 
are you? Um, sometimes it happened to me once or twice, I kind of got distracted and I forgot where I was in the rotation so I had to kind of figure out where I was going to go. Where the areas where the bark is exposed, I can actually leave some of them blank to show wear and tear and battle damage if you will. Again, just use that the little punch supplied. You can also use a pin vise or a needle if you wished, but I actually find the uh, supplied punch more than adequate for the job. It also comes with some exposed or dead uh, dead branches, which I'm using in some of the blank areas the, or the areas that don't have any bark. I would recommend using a tiny tab of super glue for these. They're a little bit heavier than the bales, and the wood glue, especially here in Ireland, where it's actually quite damp and cold at the moment here, the moisture in the air really makes those branches struggle to stay in place. And of course, if a branch is too big or you want to change it, you can always cut them and reshape them if you wish, like I'm doing here. And I'm going to focus these dead branches mostly into areas where there's bare uh, bark, just to kind of show that um, maybe a little bit of incoming fire or an air burst round stripped a bit of the tree, and just to give you the idea of a war zone. Totally up to yourself, and you don't even have to get the distressed type of trees, there's ones that have full bark, so you can create a free healthy tree if you wished. Now I'm slowly working my way up the stem, or up the trunk of the tree, and I'm gradually getting smaller and smaller with the size of the limb I'm using. So I'm going to gradually taper this back, and that's the advantage of separating the sizes of the bales supplied in the uh, pine set. Especially as we work our way up further up the trunk, and the trunk begins to taper, ensure that you've supported the other side of the trunk when you're punching into it, or you'll land up, or at least run the risk of snapping it, which we really don't want to avoid, unless you want to model the trunk exploded, which you could do if you wanted. I wasn't quite brave enough to try them, because I, I, I was quite captivated by how pretty these little trees are. And then after about an hour or so, once you get the, the, the swing of it, you're left with some very nice results, as you can see here. And because it's all natural materials, it looks real because for all intents and purposes, it's, that's exactly what it is. It's so now I'm going to cut off the, the waste material at the bottom. So I'm going to use the little jig turn on its side to support it and I'm going to use a razor saw. And literally one or two cuts and it'll come away. It's not too thick or strong, so just some gentle pressure and it'll cut right through it. And there we have our, our trees ready to get their pins. Let's just do the last one here. And once these are cut off, then we're going to use the, the two large pins supplied in the, the set and we're going to drill into the base of the tree trunks like I'm doing here. Take a little dab of super glue and we'll glue these little pins in place and they will be the mounting pins for our base. And I'll probably drill about a quarter of the way of the lint just to give me um, to ensure that's in there deep enough and then I'll lock it in place a little bit of super glue. So now I'm going to start test fitting the trees so I, before I uh, commit to putting them in any one place. It's a nice thing about working with foam, you can just literally push them in and see where you like it or not. And it doesn't really matter if you leave any marks because we're going to be uh, covering the base in plaster in a few minutes, so it doesn't really matter. So I don't want to have them in a, in a perfect straight line, so I have one slightly step forward than the other. So I'm quite happy where they are. 
So I'm just going to remove the trees. Now the pins I left in by mis um Firstly, I thought I was going to actually glue the pins in place, but I'm actually going to pull them out in a few minutes. But I'm just going to leave these in so I know where the, the locator holes are. And I'm just going to scrape away some of the foam around where the, where the trees are going to sit, just to ensure that they sit properly into the base. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to leave two match or two cocktail sticks in the the holes where the pins were, and then I'm going to glue the pins into the trees. And it's very important that we leave some type of um, post or cocktail stick in those two locator holes, because we're going to cover this base in plaster in a few minutes, and we don't want to fill those in accidentally. So I'm going to start working on our basic groundwork. So first we're going to use a plaster of Paris and a paint mix. And I always like to tint my plaster instead of just painting on top of it. It's better off this way. For any reason should it be chipped or something were to fall away, you don't have a big piece of white plaster visible. So I have a little bit of sand into my little mixing cup. I like a, literally like a tablespoon of it. And I'm going to mix in quite a, ma a large amount of PVA glue. And this is going to give both a bit of strength and ensure that the plaster sticks to the base. So I'm putting quite a big dollop here. Then we'll start mixing in our plaster. I tend to do this by eye. So I'm kind of going for like a porridge like consistency. And how you basically tell if the consistency is off or not. As long as the colour is uniform, we mix in our our burnt umber artist paint here which was going to give us our ground color or earth tone as long as the color is uniform and it's not too runny we know it's more or less correct i just tend to do this by eye like there's no real point getting too obsessed with ratios when it comes to plaster work especially after something like this we're not casting anything we're just laying down a, a ground layer so i'm going to start mixing this up quite thoroughly and i'm just watching the color change and i'm suddenly going to start adding water gradually to the cup. I'm not going to pour in a massive amount in one at once at a time. I'm just going to slowly build it up and keep watching how the plaster reacts. And I'm looking for a porridge-like consistency. If it gets too runny, you can always add more plaster. It's simple as that. If it gets too light, you can always add more paint. It's easier just to, to slowly increase the volume of whatever element you feel it needs rather than having too much of one and then having to start from scratch. are applying with an artist's spatula and I can be quite messy with this I'm, I'm not too concerned I just want to get a good strong coverage and ensure that it adheres to the base I'm going to push it down and tap it down and make sure it's correct um, or at least to ensure that's um, sticking to the base I've also will be adding plastic card to the sides of the base but I'll actually leave that to near the end you can either do it at the free start or at the very end of the build. I tend to do it whenever I feel like it really. So I'll show you how I do that in a few minutes. But right now we'll just focus on laying down the plaster. It's a little bit too much like icing a cake, I always find this part. But again, as long as you try to keep it as smooth or even as possible, you get a nice result. And we're not gonna see very much of this anyway. It's just there because, well, earth is present in nature, so we have to replicate it in miniature. So 
I'm just trying to make sure I cover all the blue with the foam. So I'm going over the edges by a few mil on, on each corner just to ensure that uh, none of it peels back. And then once I'm happy, I'll just start scraping away anything that went over the edge. Just using the sharp edge of the uh, modeling trowel or the artist trowel. There we have it, simple as that. That will take about 24 hours for it to dry, and once it's dry, we can continue. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to take some very thin paper like plastic card or styrene sheet, and that's going to, I'm going to use that to blank the edges of our base. I always like to have our base a little bit tall. Um, it just basically adds a little bit of visual interest. I find when you have a base too low to the ground, it gets absorbed by the table. So I'm going to cut that to shape, and then I'm going to use a non solvent adhesive, so no super glue, so hot glue would be perfect for this and just glue it into place. Once that's glue in, the, in place, I'm going to start laying down a little bit of PVA glue and I'm going to start applying a little bit of uh, a, a flock, a, a basic grass layer. Again, we're going to see very little of this, but then again, it's present in nature, so we have to re reproduce it, because often there might be a break in the snow or in the, the forest litter, and, we'll, and if we don't see it, we'll know it's missing. So I'm just using some uh, Army Painter um, basing flock, one of their darker colours, after all this is meant to be winter, so it's not going to be bright green, and that's quite important that we keep that in mind, what season we're working in. I'm just going to tap it down and then knock off the, the excess. And with that out of the way, now we're going to start working on the actual forest floor, and we're going to be using Scenic Factory's forest uh, litter and forest floor, both autumn and spring shades. To lock it down, we're going to be using a free watered down um, version or mixture of artist's uh, matte medium and we're going to apply that through a spray gun. So I just have some containers here and I'm just going to separate the different colours just for, uh, for convenience. We won't be needing too much, the base is relatively small and a little goes a long way. And this is going to give us some lovely textures to play with when we start applying it to the base. Especially uh, the various different colours and we can mix these together and it just creates a little bit of visual interest for us little bit of the the leaf litter. I'm not going to go too mad with this one but still it's, it's going to add a little bit of interest to the model and I'm just literally going to start applying it by sprinkling it as heavy as I wish or as lightly as I wish over the base. I have no adhesives laid down yet. We're actually going to apply the adhesives which in this case is going to be an uh, artist matte medium thinned quite heavily about 60% uh, water to uh, 40 or even 30% uh, matte medium. We want that to be very thin and we're just going to use like a spray gun to apply it. So I'm just like using the different colours, sprinkling them one over the other and just slowly building it up. I want it to be quite thick. So just like think of any time you ever walk through a forest. Like it's normally quite dense with uh, pine needles and what, what have you. And once I'm happy done with the first layer, I'm just, I have a, a, a simple spray gun here and I'm just going to apply it. A spray gun I'm using is for household use, which I've cleaned thoroughly, but the pressure is a bit too high on it. So if you can get like a, a proper plant sprayer, that might be a better job than what I'm using. But this worked just fine too. It did get a little bit messy, however. So just bear that in mind and make sure your work uh, uh, surface is covered with some type of covering or you will destroy the place. However, it actually gives us a very realistic effect once we spray it this way. So it actually sits naturally rather than us pushing it down onto uh, a glue. I'm going to apply and sprinkle on some of the leaf litter. So just going to sprinkle it randomly. I'm not going too mad with this, I don't want it too much, um, just because the colour is quite stark. So I'm just going to sprinkle like, a couple of um, handfuls of it, and I'll be, or not even handfuls, but it's a few um, sprinklings of it. And then once I'm happy with it, I'll spray it down with another uh, coat of artist matte medium. In all it took about two or three coats of matte medium each allowing each to dry in between to actually lock everything down and it being so cold here it took the better part of a week for all of it to dry however the end effect was actually very lovely and well worth the, the effort. So now everything is dried now we can start applying our trees. So I'm just going to start removing the, the, the pins to open up the locator tabs and I've just dipped the 
the ta the the needle or the uh, locating pin in a little bit of white glue just to lock it all in place and I just push it down very gently by its by the by the trunk just to ensure that it sits snugly on the base and there we have our pine forest ready for the snow which is one of the most striking features of of Bastogne is the thick snow so we're going to be using our fine snow effects again from uh, scenic factory and we're going to be uh, using a spray mount to apply it now even though that's a solvent based we've covered all the foam so it shouldn't melt and I have a very fine sieve that I bought in a pound shop that we'll be using to apply it there is one available on their website which is much finer meshed and in hindsight I really should have bought that but I didn't think of it at the time so I found that even though that was the smallest sieve I could find it just dumped too much snow at any one time but we still got it to work you just have to apply much less in a great uh, in different settings or it takes a few a few areas to drop it if you get me or a few a few layers so I'm going to use a little piece of card to hold underneath the, the sieve so it doesn't go into places I don't want it and I'm only going to apply a little bit into the sieve any one time and I'm just going to gently tap keeping the sieve moving at all times and that stops it from building up in any one area and I just keep it moving and just let it build up naturally I'm not going for a very heavy snowfall here just a very light one um, a lot of people seem to maybe not notice but the opening parts of the Battle of the Bulge was not that snowy it's as the battle pro uh, progressed did it get very cold and then the snow came so this is just the first uh, the virgin snow if you will it's just it's just becoming it's just beginning to come down perhaps by the time the first airborne arrived in Bastogne it was quite a heavy snowfall however just for the purposes of this I find less sometimes is more and I'm just building it up in progressive layers taking time to uh, slowly build it up don't want to do too much too quick it'll, it'll give us a very unconvincing look otherwise and again I'm just moving the sieve around constantly and there we have it the um, the photo mount locks everything down and if you wish you could you can quickly mist the, the base with a bit of the photo mount to lock it all in place now I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, snow to the base of the grey coat of our paratrooper and I'm just going to lay down a little bit of um, satin varnish from Filejo and then I'm just going to uh, pick up a small amount of the fine snow effects and an old brush and I'm just going to tap it like as a pigment over the over the model and just give it a very light dusting of snow we don't want too much of this just a little bit um, again because we had too much it becomes very unrealistic very quickly but it will give it a very nice effect and blend everything in together when we put our figure onto the base and once that's done our figure is ready for mounting which will just have him a, a pin tree's foot and we'll drill into the base and apply him that way so i really hope you enjoyed this the scenic factory um train sets are absolutely amazing I was, I was very blown away and very impressed by them so i would strongly recommend them if you're looking for a pine tree or um other types of normal like deciduous trees and what have you so join me for the next tutorial where we'll be painting a member of camp group hansen and doing a themed base for him as well i have been shane thank you so much and i hope you enjoyed the video happy modeling and watch out for those buses bye bye